Mr. Speaker, the story of our country, of our people, is one that says we are too rich to be poor, too talented to be denied opportunities, too blessed to have daily stresses, the daily stresses we do, and too proud to be disheartened without pursuing solutions for a better socially and economically fairer Cayman. The socially corrosive issues like income inequality and wealth disparity must be tackled head on. There are many wins for our people in this budget. From the day we took office, it has been our mission to protect our people while promoting economic resilience and diversification. The sad fact is economic growth alone is not the solution. It isn't working for our people. Not when a two-bedroom apartment costs upwards of $400,000 today. How many people making $3,000 a month can afford that? Access to opportunities and being prepared to succeed must be the norm for Caymanians. Inequality threatens that norm. But the PAC government stands united and unified in our determination to break this cycle for our people. Too many of our people are being left behind. Our precious children, some of whom will become our future leaders, are not getting the nutritious meals at home that they need to survive, sustain, and grow because their parents or guardians have a challenging time making ends meet. We identify this need, sir, and this government, through the passion and commitment of the Minister of Education, stepped up to the plate and made a real investment in our future. In 2022, we have budgeted to enhance food security for children through the school meals program with a further increase in 2023. The Honourable Minister of Education decided no child should go hungry. So our free meal service began with the primary schools. We all now know how hard it is to concentrate on something important when our bellies are aching from hunger. We know that students and their families must have decent housing and a place to lay their heads at night. For those families that need help, we have budgeted for housing repairs assistance and for initiatives administered by the National Housing Trust, um, Housing Development Trust, and Sister Islands Affordable Housing Trust, and for the construction of affordable housing options over the two-year budget. We are going to address inequality. That is why we have agreed to reconvene the Minimum Wage Committee. Early New Year. To amend advertising requirements for work permits and increase the visibility of job vacancies that will not require login, registration, or any personal details. If today we can find Caymanians running some of the largest firms on the island or conducting brilliant work as we see in our civil service every day, then we can certainly find a Caymanian capable of bartending or working at the front desk. Many, if not all, that we will not support the wholesale granting of tourism-related work permits while thousands of Caymanians remain unemployed. Priorities have changed. People desire a greater work-life balance. A fair and just society means that we, we must support families. There's no time that a family, or that a child rather, requires greater support than as a newborn. Therefore, I will work closely with the Minister for Labor during this administration to revisit maternity and paternity leave. We have to implement policies to assist and protect our middle class while continuing to encourage investment and a global outlook. We are committed to making a meaningful and measurable difference by 2030. It won't be easy, yet I am optimistic that working together with the private sector 
non-governmental organizations and the various like-minded communities across our three islands, we can become a modern model of sustainability as a small island developing state. We will raise the profile of sports in the Cayman Islands and improve standards of instruction and performance through accountability. If we have learned anything from the pandemic, the global supply chain is fragile. That is why the time to invest in our food security is now. Sustainability means reducing the distance between the farm and the fork. We encourage our farmers and local entrepreneurs to grow more products domestically. We're also improving the quality of food available in our local restaurants and supermarkets. It is simply a win-win scenario. We need to set targets for becoming carbon zero, for the electrification of transportation, and adopt a robust plan to make up for doing hardly anything to achieve our renewable energy targets under the current national energy policy. We will re-examine how the Cayman Islands Development Bank can support Caymanians seeking to meet their needs to manage debt and access opportunities. We must work together as that is the way to build stronger communities and a stronger country.